In this video, we're going to look at a couple of new features that arrived in Darktable 4, and they are the ability to spot meter exposure and white balance from one image, and then map those values to a group of images so that you get a consistency in both exposure and white balance across a sequence of images. Pretty cool. Let's go. Hi and welcome to episode 116 of Understanding Darktable. First up, apologies. I'm normally a lot more prompt in getting videos out, particularly when a new version of Darktable arrives, but the last couple of weeks have been absolutely manic. Anyway, for this video, it occurred to me as I was, you know, thinking through my thought process of what I would do to cover these new features, that the way I shoot today doesn't lend itself to using these features. And I really needed to go way, 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 way back in my image collection to a time when I used to shoot with auto white balance. Because with auto white balance, you can shoot a sequence of images within a short period of time, like over a minute or a couple of minutes or whatever. And you're pretty much guaranteed that the white balance is going to change admittedly quite subtly, but it will change between those images. So I went back to 2009 and I found these five images that I'll show you in a sec. The thing is that these days I always shoot with generally one of three white balance presets. It will either be daylight, cloudy or flash. And honestly, that would account for 98% of my shooting. And the other 2% would be where I set it to Kelvin, put it in set, take a shot of a white card, the camera will then ascertain the white balance of that particular lighting environment and set that colour temperature, and I can then go ahead and do the rest of the shoot that way. And again, I end up with consistent white balance across all of those images. So, what I've done is grab these five images, and as you can see, I was at the Sydney Cricket Ground watching a cricket match. Now, if you look at these five thumbnails, you can see that the exposure does differ across the five frames, and there's probably some subtle variation in the white balance as well. So what we will do, I've already, by the way, discarded the history stack for these five images. So there is no history here. If we jump into the darkroom, you can see that there is just the starting point for any raw file in Darktable. Now, if we look at our active group, we can see that Filmic and Color Calibration are both switched on. I don't want that. So I am going to turn both of those off, jump back into the light table, selectively copy, select none, go Filmic and Color Calibration only, click OK, select, invert selection, go back to the history stack, and make sure I'm in append mode and paste. And for some reason, the thumbnails don't want to update. But if I was to go into any of these images in the darkroom view, you would see that the processing has been removed. And you can see it, the thumbnail down here will reflect the changes until you move to the next image and then they revert back to their old thumbnail. It's kind of weird, but anyway, so be it. Now, before we get into the exposure, which I am going to cover first, I do want to just look at the white balance. And in this instance, what I want to do is set the white balance back to as shot in camera, just so you can see what I'm talking about. These were all shot in auto white balance. And if we look at this first image, temperature 5047 Kelvin. Second image, 5094 Kelvin. Third image, 5092 Kelvin. Fourth image, 51.28, and the last image, 51.37. So there you go. Shooting in auto white balance, I've got five images, all with a different white balance. Now, like I said, admittedly a very subtle difference, but a difference nonetheless. Anyway, we're going to do exposure first. So the way this works, if we look at our five images, we need to pick one image that's going to be our cornerstone, if you like. The one that we're saying, this is the anchor, I want every other image to 
share this exposure value. Now, looking at the histogram, I actually think that this first image, the darkest of the lot, is actually the, the best exposed. That's sort of, you know, all pushing up against the right-hand edge of the histogram, where that first one has got a little bit more latitude to it. So we're going to use that as our anchor. Now, the way this feature works is at the bottom of the exposure module, you will now see this button, Spot Exposure Mapping, and you can expand this little panel. We then have Spot Mode, and there are two values, Correction and Measure. What we want to do is go to Measure Mode to say, this is the target exposure. And the way we do it is we grab our little eyedropper tool from the exposure slider and draw out somewhere, and in this instance I'm going to use the green of the grass, to say this is representative of the exposure that I want to map all of my other images to. Now, please don't think that this is a complicated way of just going to the light table and go history stack and go selective copy, exposure, and then paste that to all of your other images because that isn't going to work because it's just going to copy a particular, you know, positive or negative exposure value to every image regardless of where the exposure was to begin with. This is all about saying the exposure of these five images is all over the shop and I want to bring them to one consistent point. So there is a difference there in not only in workflow, but in what it achieves. So, you know, please, please don't think that we're just overcomplicating what should have been a simple process. This is something entirely different. So, we've now measured this patch of grass and said to Darktable, that's the exposure value I want for all of my images. So now we jump to the second image and we set this back to correction. Again, we grab the eyedropper and it's in the wrong spot. We just want to select some grass. So we do that. And then we move on to our third image. It's in correction. We grab the eyedropper. We'll select some grass. And it doesn't matter how big the sample is. As long as it's consistent with what you mapped out of your first image, it'll be fine. Go to the fourth image. Grab our eyedropper. And we might just grab some grass that's in there. And then our fifth image, and we'll grab our eyedropper, and probably could have left it where it was. <laughs> and there we go. You can see now, and I'll jump back out to the light table, you can see that across all of those five thumbnails, the exposure is, it's bang on. It's exactly consistent across all of those images. And what's great is they could have been shot at different apertures and different shutter speeds, potentially even different ISOs. And we've now got a consistent exposure across all of those images. Now, if you're doing any sort of product work where you're shooting a product multiple times and you need a consistency across all of the images, this is a godsend. This is fantastic. So that's how the exposure mapping works. So let's have a look at how we do the white balance mapping because it's essentially the same process. So we come back to our first image. We are still looking at white balance as set in camera. We are now going to change that back to D65 because we are going to reintroduce the color calibration module. But before we do that, let's just turn the white balance back to D65 for all of the five images. So we will jump back out to the light table, selective copy, select none, go white balance, click OK, invert the selection, go back to history stack, set this to overwrite and paste. And now all of our images have our white balance module set to D65. But at this point in time, color calibration is not yet turned on. That's okay, let's go and do that. Turn color calibration on, and straight away, our white balance has been corrected by the color calibration module. Now, if for some reason, you feel that color calibration module hasn't accurately read 
the white balance as you believe it should be, then by all means go ahead and tweak. But we'll assume that you are happy with what the module has deemed to be the white balance. We now have this extra button, if you like, at the bottom of the module, spot color mapping. So we can expand that. And again, we have a spot mode that offers both correction and measure. And as we did before for exposure, for our first image, we want to set it to measure. And then we grab our eyedropper tool and we'll just draw out any part of the image that is consistent across all of the images. And this is the great part about this. It doesn't have to be black. It doesn't have to be white. It doesn't have to be middle gray. I'm just going to use the green of the grass because that's consistent across all five images. And if you're shooting a product, you could just take a sample of the product. Wouldn't matter what color it was. This is awesome. So we now have that reading of the white balance. We can move on to our next image. And we now have the spot mode set back to correction. We again just grab our eyedropper, make sure we select some grass and nothing else but grass. And we can just keep on moving on and repeating the process just like we did for the exposure correction. And what we will end up with is a consistent white balance across all of our images. How cool is that? That is just brilliant. Now, like I said, this will certainly come to the aid of anybody who shoots with auto white balance, simply because of the variance that audio auto white balance always delivers you in the raw files that your camera generates. If you are like me, where you shoot with a white balance preset all of the time, then you're probably not going to need to do a white balance mapping like I've just demonstrated. But if you do shoot auto white balance, then this will probably be a great benefit. Okay, that is it for this video. Uh, a couple of things before I move on. Uh, yes, apologies for the delay in getting around to some Dark Table 4 content. Uh, the last couple of weeks has just been absolutely crazy since I got back from Western Australia. There's uh, potential for me to go back into radio. Uh, pretty excited about that. Uh, I have picked up a six-month contract with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, uh, working out of the ABC at Newcastle, um, which is a fair hike from here. It takes me about an hour 45 each way <laughs> in commuting. Um, but it's only for two days a week at this point in time. That could very well extend. Don't want to count my chickens yet, but things are looking good there. So, so that has sort of swallowed up a lot of my time i know i know i said it's only two days a week but yeah um got a bunch of other things on the go as well uh what else did i want to mention there was something else that i was going to mention i have a feeling it was about dark table oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so in the past i have normally done a new features summary video and this round, I've just decided, you know what, I'm not. I'm just going to do a series of videos where I feature, you know, each individual new thing within Darktable 4 as a video on its own. That does mean it'll take me a little longer to get through all of the stuff that's new. So be it. But I do feel like it gives me the opportunity to actually go into detail as to what each new feature does right off the bat, rather than giving you a tease and then making you wait however long it was going to be for a dedicated video. So uh, whether this is the right move or not, I guess only time will tell. Yeah, okay. Questions, comments, feedback, sing out down below, and I will catch you in the next one.